Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my guide on how to beat the Reckoning, which is Destiny 2's new PvE activity that arrived with the Joker's Wild DLC. Now, you get access to this activity from, I think, beating your first Gambit Prime match, or, or completing your first Gambit Prime match. It's accessed from the Gambit node in the Director. Upon starting it, you'll be match made. You'll get to this area, which is the the derelict and you'll be trans you'll be transported through into the husk that it kind of drags about into this area i think it's called the chasm i can't actually remember uh, so this is a social space you can come here you can stay here as long as you want there are seven pieces of lore between the derelict and here haven't put them in the video because all pieces aren't available yet i will do a guide on them all if you guys require it but to get rewards you need to access this You'll start with a weak synthesizer upon completing a bounty in Gambit Prime. You'll be able to upgrade it to a middling synthesizer. You also acquire synths through Gambit Prime. You can use this synthesizer to change the synthesizers into moats, the synths into moats. Change it to the class you want, put it into the bank as if you're putting moats in, in Gambit, and upon a successful completion, it will give you a, a random piece of armor based on that class so if you put a reaper moat in you'll get reaper armor this black kind of crater is how you rally a flag it's a raid banner you get them from petra in the dreaming city if you didn't know you put it there everybody in your team can rally it get full uh, super and heavy only one of those uh, only one of those uh, things on the bank will be will be active so find the one that's active put your moat in and start the activity so my first tip for beating this is best weapons for the job now everybody's got their favorite weapons and while they might work they might not be the best weapons to complete this activity thunderlord for ad clearance is just un unstoppable it took a bit of a hit you get less reserves it does less against bosses that's to stop people like me melting bosses with with the thunderlord not just me there's tons of other people doing it so but against ads it's just super good so what I'm going to do, I've got machine gun reserves on. Uh, I always put machine gun reserves on. I've got double heavy ammo finder because let's be honest, nobody really knows how that works yet, even if it does work. And I'm going to use the ammunition that I came in with and no more. I'm not going to pick up any heavy ammo whilst I've got the thunder load on because I want that for my heavy. The heavy I'm going to use against the boss, which will be the Warcliffe coil. Now... I'm not, and I never do, I never say this in any of my videos, guys, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it because I actually have a different run after this where I don't use any of these. But this was the tactic that I settled on. It was the easiest to do, and whilst I was using it, I never failed to beat this. It's not super difficult, but some people might find it a little bit challenging because they're going in with randoms, and, you know, communication with randoms isn't great. We all know that. I had done all my runs, bar the first, the, thing, the first three or four I'd done with a team, but all the super successful ones were done with, the, the ones where we beat it in like two or three minutes, were done with randoms. So, Thunderlord for ads, once the boss comes up, change, put machine gun, uh, hit, mach uh, rocket launcher scavenger on, and put the war cliff on. Don't put rocket launcher reserves on because it won't increase the amount of ammo you, you can carry with Warcliffe. You can only ever carry five. And go and pick up any heavy you've dropped and then attack the boss. Now, one thing I will say is, I've not mentioned it yet, is how you actually acquire dominance. Dominance, you need to get dominance to 100% to get the boss out. Dominance is acquired by killing waves of ads, killing ultras, and killing elites. Now, Elites are, it kind of goes up. You've got normal ads and you've got elites and you've got ultras. The Thunderlord isn't so great anymore against ultras, but it's still pretty good against elites. You get, I think, 1% for every three ads you kill, two or three ad, normal ads. You get 3% for an, an elite and you get 7% for an ultra. So it makes sense to attack waves of ads that are bunched around an elite or an ultra. If someone's got a tether, as you see, I'm the tether guy, tether them makes doing the damage so much easier and as you can see here now i'm changing machine gun uh, rocket launcher scavenger and uh i've changed to the war cliff i know i dropped some heavy ammo down at the bottom i'm gonna go and pick it up 
So once you get the boss out, there's four variants of the boss. And I'm going to show off three of them because, unfortunately, guys, it's random, the bosses you get. I never got the likeness of Oryx, the wizard. I never got the wizard while I was recording. So I, my apologies, but there's nothing I could do about it. So as you can see here, we've got a server. The server kind of fires darkness blasts at you. Uh, and, and none of them are too difficult, but uh, you, you still have to be you still have to be on your toes. So this is the server, not too bad. This has is the variant of the meatball, which you, you attack the same way. And this is the Cabal guy. He's very similar to the Lake of Shadows, Malfeasance version of the Corrupted Strike, that kind of guy. And there's also, as I say, the likeness of Oryx. My Third, what, probably one of my last tips for this is to play the modifiers. Now, for this run here, it was Grenadier, Void, and uh, Attrition, which is you drop motes, you drop these light motes. This run here that I'm going to be showing you was Glass, Void, and Melee does more damage. So I decided to not run with Void as my super. I didn't run Thunderlord, I kept on, I never put a raid banner down, I never put any of that down, just to show you that it's possible to do these things without it, but that Thunderlord Warcliffe strategy is just too good. I ran with Arkstrader with a raid and flux chest plate on, and it really just, you know, it really just done tons of damage. That's what I was kind of using as my, my Thunderlord, if you like. Big ad clearer, clear waves of ads quickly, uh, but I was using Limon Arc for the Void. So it's really good spraying that Void damage. What I kind of, it's not so much a tip, it's just, you know, I suppose it is a tip. If you're playing, if you're doing this and there's snipers, I always pick a roll. So when the boss comes out, I'm either going to be the first to attack the boss or I'm going to support my team with clearing ads and doing damage on the boss while I've got it, but not standing there shooting them with my energy on my primary. I'll clear ads, try to drop more heavy. Because as anybody that knows me knows, I'm always telling you guys, if you've got heavy, heavy ammo finder on, which you all should have at least one. We don't know how it works, but let's be honest, it must work somehow. Uh, you want to drop heavy at all times. So, you know... You want to give yourself the best chance to drop heavy. So always switch out weapons to get give yourself the chance to drop heavy. But the beautiful thing about the Thunderlord is you don't have to pump tons of rounds into waves of ads to kill them. You want to proc the lightning rounds to do the job for you. Heavy ammo can drop from that because it doesn't class it as... It classes it as the perk kill, not the weapon kill. So use that lightning rounds to help you drop heavy. Don't pick the heavy up whilst you've got the Warcliffe on. Uh, whilst you've got the Thunderlord on, wait, just take a note of where it is, and wait until you put the Warcliffe on, make sure you've got that machine, that rocket launcher, uh, scavenger on, get the two, two rounds for the one brick, so, melee damage done more, so I've put on a melee super, he was very lucky there, because he has, the, that cabal guy's kind of thing is he tethers, so, he tethered me, and I couldn't pop my super, he was very lucky, but so was I, because if I'd have popped my super, he'd have took it off me, so just be aware of that. The other cool thing about this super, the, re the reason I used this, especially because the extra melee damage, is as you can see, it kind of keeps him in the one place. He's going to try and fire his super. It doesn't work if you're attacking him with a super. So, really good strat. I played the modifiers, I think, really well here, because I knew I was going to do lots of damage against the boss with that melee, I, I didn't think that Void would be so good because he can walk out of the tether, you know? So, last but not least, and this is something I've noticed as I say, I've played tons and tons with randoms, I've noticed this tons and tons, as I, I, I done a, <clears throat> I'm not going to mention any names, but and I, I haven't put it in the video, I done a match, I dropped him, it was clearing ads, <clears throat> doing really well, and then I went down. Three of my teammates stood over my orb, shooting ads, never re revived me. I had to res myself back up top. By the time I got back down, all three of them were dead. 
that's 20 seconds of DPS lost. And I had a super, I possibly could have kept him alive for a bit longer. So raise your teammates if at all possible. That's the guide, guys. I hope this helps some of you guys complete this. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got something to add, leave it in the comment section. If this is the first time at the channel, I appreciate your viewership. If you like what you've seen, you could always join the team. You could always join the, the gang. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is always enough for me, as Bife would say. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy yourself in the reckoning, and I will see you in the next video.